Thursday evening worship. We're so glad that you're able to uh, be with us tonight. Uh, as you may already figured out, uh, this service is pre-recorded. Um, unless I'm in Alaska and it's 24 hours of daylight, I don't know. But anyway, so so glad that you are able to be here and be with us tonight. I just want you all to know that um, your staff at First United really misses all of you. Uh, we miss not being together during the Safer at Home, but we totally understand it. We are continuing to love our neighbor by not getting together or not uh, congregating together. And we're going to love on God, all of God's creation right now. So we're grateful for you staying safe, staying healthy, and staying at home as well. We are continuing to be church together. And so we're excited about the ways we are able to connect. With those being our announcements for this evening, we will begin our worship service for this third Thursday of Easter. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our prayer of confession. Sometimes our hearts ache within us, O Lord. Like those travelers on the Emmaus Road, there are times we feel a deep sadness because we no longer feel your presence with us. Forgive us when we close our eyes to your presence. Heal our brokenness. Bind up our wounds. Place us on the path of healing and help us to be people who bring compassion and caring to others. Amen. Our words of assurance. Hear the good news. 
God is here with us right now and walks with us into this world, forgiving our sins and healing our hearts. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our opening song this evening is Christ is Risen. Please join us in singing. We'll continue our service with our call to worship. As you walk with us, Lord, and we journey together, your word fills our hearts. As you speak with us and your love is revealed, your fire burns in our hearts. As we proclaim what we have seen and heard, may all people be drawn to you, the risen Lord. We'll continue now with our prayer of the day. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray together. Loving God, come and speak to our hearts today. May we, like those on the Emmaus Road, find our words burning with hope in our lives. Strengthen us and give us courage for the journey ahead. For we pray in Christ's name, amen. We will now continue with our readings. An introduction for our first lesson. The imagery of exile is used to help the readers of this letter understand that they are strangers in a strange land. Christians no longer belong to this age. 
Through the death of Christ, we belong to God so that our focus, faith, and hope are no longer on such things as silver or gold. The first lesson is from 1 Peter chapter 1. Christ was chosen even before the world was created, but because of you, he did not come until these last days. And when he did come, it was to lead you to have faith in God, who raised him from death and honored him in a glorious way. That's why you have put your faith and hope in God. You obeyed the truth and your souls were made pure. Now you sincerely love each other, but you must keep on loving with all your heart. Do this because God has given you new birth by his message that lives on forever. This ends the first lesson. An introduction for our gospel lesson. The colorful story of Jesus' appearance to two disciples on the road to Emmaus answers the question of how Jesus is to be recognized among us. Here, he is revealed through the scriptures and in the breaking of bread. The gospel lesson is from Luke chapter 24. That same day, two of Jesus' disciples were going to the village of Emmaus, which was about seven miles from Jerusalem. As they were talking and thinking about what had happened, Jesus came near and started walking along beside them, but they did not know who he was. Jesus asked them, what were you talking about as you walked along? The two of them stood there looking sad and gloomy. Then the one named Cleophas asked Jesus, are you the only person from Jerusalem who didn't know what was happening there these last few days? What do you mean, Jesus asked. They answered, those things that happened to Jesus from Nazareth. By what he did and said, he showed that he was a powerful prophet who pleased God and all the people. Then the chief priests and our leaders had him arrested and sentenced to die on a cross. We had hoped that he would be the one to set Israel free, but it has already been three days since all this happened. Some women in our group surprised us. They had gone to the tomb early in the morning, but did not find the body of Jesus. They came back saying that they had seen a vision of angels who told them that he is alive. Some men from our group went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they didn't see Jesus either. Then Jesus asked the two disciples, why can't you understand? How can you be so slow to believe all that the prophets said? Didn't you know that the Messiah would have to suffer before he was given his glory? Jesus then explained everything written about himself in the scriptures, beginning with the law of Moses and the books of the prophets. When the two of them came near the village where they were going, Jesus seemed to be going farther. They begged him, stay with us. It's already late and the sun is going down. So Jesus went into the house to stay with them. After Jesus sat down to eat, he took some bread. He blessed it and broke it, then he gave it to them. At once they knew who he was, but he disappeared. They said to each other, when he talked with us along the road and explained the scriptures to us, didn't it warm our hearts? So they got right up and returned to Jerusalem. The two disciples found the 11 apostles and the others gathered together. And they learned from the group that the Lord was really alive and had appeared to Peter. Then the disciples from Emmaus told what had happened on the road and how they knew he was the Lord when he broke the bread. This ends the gospel lesson. At this time, I'm going to ask that all of our uh, little ones and children to please come forward, sit on your mom or dad's lap or big brother's or a big sister's lap, um, whatever device that you are watching from, because I'd love to take a few moments and share a children's message with you. Um, you can see here I have a loaf of bread and I have some place settings. And what I want to tell all of you is that, you know, I look at our church as kind of a loaf of bread and each of the slices in this uh, loaf of bread represents each of our families individual families and what I like about that is that each of our families also have their own place where they live and I want to tell you a story that the day that Jesus came out of the tomb and was made alive again, what's interesting is that he was um, met some of his former disciples on this road to this town called Emmaus. And as he was uh, going there, he asked the disciples, well, what are you guys talking about? 
And the disciples began to say, well, didn't you hear about this Jesus? Um, and, and everything that happened, how he came to Jerusalem and there's a parade for him. And then he was crucified and he died and was laid in a tomb. And there's rumor that he's been raised. And so the disciples are talking about all of this. And the disciples didn't recognize that it was the risen Jesus. Well, later on that day, as the disciples got to their house, they were going to go in and eat dinner. And Jesus was going to Jesus was going to keep walking. But the disciples said, "Hey, they thought he was a stranger yet. Come on in, have dinner with us." And as Jesus went in and sat down, being very welcoming. And being people of hospitality was very big in Jesus' day. So when they were sitting at the table, Jesus began to take over as if he was the host of the dinner. And so he took the bread and he broke it. And it was at that moment that the disciples recognized that it was the risen Jesus. And I think about our loaf of bread here and how this is the church and each slice is our individual families and as I look around the table here look at all the different place settings are in different locations around the table that's kind of like our homes even though we all have our own place our own homes in different places we still are part of the church we are part of Jesus' church, even from whatever place we are sitting at this morning. And together there will be a day when we'll come back together and make the full loaf that is the church of new life, the bread of new life. But for now, we are reminded that every time we gather around our table with our families, Jesus is truly present, even in this moment. And so for that, we give thanks. Hey, thanks for being a part of our children's server today. <sighs> Miss you guys. Can't wait sometime when we can all get together again sometime down the road, okay? Blessings. You know, um, for Easter Sunday, uh, we recorded the service uh, out in our living room in front of the fireplace. And so this particular Sunday, uh, decided to um, be in our back family room. This is the space where Pam and I spend most of our time. And even though we have a formal dining room table out in the other room, uh, this is the table that we sit at most of the time. It's in the back, facing our backyard. And this is where we like to be and to hang out. And yes, it is a packer room. I finally wore it down. So you can see the yellow walls and some of the green and there's if you were to see all the walls, you'd see a bunch of Packers stuff back here. But what house should have that? But anyways, I got thinking about two images today. One is, um, I want you to think about the image about our church being like a loaf of bread and the individual slices of each of our families and that, yes, even though right now we are in separate places and different locations around God's table, we are still the church. That's one image I want us to hang on to. But I also want us to think about the image of roads. I don't know how it is for you in your life, but um, usually when I'm on the road, I'm not always thinking about blessing other people and other cars. Um, sometimes I can be a kind of an impatient driver. That might be a newsflash for some of you. Uh, but at the end of the day though, um, there's so many different kinds of roads, aren't there? Uh, there's interstates and there's the backcountry roads. There are streets and we have intersections and we have five corners and six corners and we have roundabouts and there's so many different kinds of roads that make up all the different places to where we travel. I can remember um, back, I'm going to be dating myself, uh, growing up in Appleton, uh, junior high was 7th, 8th, and 9th grade and then high school was 10th, 11th, and 12th. I can remember going to Roosevelt Junior High. Uh, and at that time, the ninth graders would have a formal farewell dance. 
And my ninth grade year, uh, the theme song for that was a song from the Beatles, The Long and Winding Road. That kind of feels like what we're going through right now. Um, a long and winding road, we're maybe not sure what the destination is. And as I think about this image of roads, I can't help but think about um, Rascal Flatts and their song, you know, God Bless the Broken Roads. And sometimes it feels like our roads are broken right now, um, not necessarily literally or, uh, or figuratively, but just with what, everything that's going on around us, you know, it's like things are so much harder to do and to get to um, in the midst of all of our travels. But that image of road, I think, is really important for us because as you look around our streets, we might even think of the old phrase, a road less traveled. But here we are. This, this day, in our homes, practicing safer at home because we love our neighbors enough to not get together. We love our families enough not to be physically together. So the road is feel, might feel broken. The road might feel long and winding. The road might feel less traveled. We've never been down this path before. But here we are. In our gospel lesson today, Jesus, in our gospel lesson today, Jesus uh, talked about, or we heard the story about Jesus on the road to Emmaus with the disciples. He appeared to them. Yes, just to take a break, that is my dog just barking and she just distracted me. I can show you her a little bit later. So she did throw me off my game. I apologize for that. But anyways, just to get back to it for a second, that, you know, the long and winding road is what this moment may feel like. It might feel that it's a broken road that needs to be blessed. And like I was saying before, <laughs> I got distracted by a one-year-old dog, that it might feel like a road that's less traveled, that we've never been down this road in the moment that we're living in right now. I know that. And yet we're trying to be safer at home together. In Luke's Gospel today, uh, we're reminded that there's a lot of roads in Luke's Gospel. And... Uh, Eric Beretta, in his commentary work on Luke, talks about the image of roads in Luke's gospel is really, really important. And what he wants us to remember is that, look, on the way Joseph and Mary had to go to take the road to Bethlehem. They had to take the road later on and, and flee to another country when Jesus' life was threatened. We have the story of the prodigal son who went on the road. We have the story of the Good Samaritan in Luke's Gospel on the road, you know, where the Good Samaritan saw somebody who needed help. And then we have the story of Jesus' um, entry into Jerusalem, riding on a donkey as, as palms and coats were laid down in front of him. And then we have this moment post-resurrection in luke's gospel this is still the same day but it's it, it, later in the day after the marys went to the tomb and saw that the tomb was empty had an encounter with the angel and then went back to tell the disciples all that was said this is later that day and i'm sure they were trying to process everything that happened. And as they're making the seven-mile walk from Jerusalem to Emmaus, I'm sure they were processing everything that had happened and just trying to get a handle on it when Jesus appears, the risen Jesus appears. And I'm sure that wasn't easy because Jesus began to ask, ask them, hey, what are you guys talking about? And it was in that moment then that, you know, they said, well, Jesus, haven't you heard? Did you hear about everything that went on in Jerusalem last week with this guy named Jesus and everything that happened and how there was this trial and then he was crucified and he is buried in a tomb? And now there's rumblings that maybe he was resurrected and he might be alive? And so they're telling this to Jesus as they're walking. And you know how when you walk, you may not be necessarily making eye contact with somebody? Well, that's kind of what was going on 
that day as they were walking side by side with the risen Jesus who they didn't recognize. And so here it is. They're walking along and they get to their house. And like I was telling the kids around the table, the disciples got to their house. They're going to go eat dinner. And they invite Jesus because Jesus was going to keep walking. And it's in that moment around an ordinary table like this one that they, they sat down and Jesus broke bread. And they then recognized him. Eyeball to eyeball. Eye contact. All of a sudden, that long and winding road, that broken road, that road less traveled, was now blessed. And they realized that Jesus was in their midst and present. To get to all of our homes, there's a road that takes us there. Some roads are pretty smooth, and some can be pretty bumpy rides. Some roads are less traveled and unknown, like this moment. But in the midst of us being in our own homes, our own safe places, our own sanctuaries, we are still the church. We still are a part of the body of Christ. We are still the church even though we are in different places around God's amazing, holy banquet table. And Jesus is in our midst. We may not always recognize um, Jesus in each moment like the disciples did not for a while that day. But we know he's in our midst walking with us. And for that we give thanks. As we travel the roads, we do it together. We're in this together as church. Each slice of us. Amen. We are now going to continue with the prayers of the people. But before I do that, I just want to show you, uh, Pam and I have a prayer bowl on our table here in the back and you know how sometimes we either text somebody or we say to somebody hey we're going to pray for you well Pam and I decided to be a little more intentional about that and so what I did for this evening is that the names of those uh, who we got prayer requests for and I'm going to ask that if you have any prayer requests uh, please email those to Tina or call her and um, anyway so the, I'll pull the names out of the prayer requests we got this past week prior to the recording uh, from our church family and lift those names up before you. So we continue with the prayers of the people. Let us pray. God of grace, you have blessed us with the gift of community. Help us to recognize Christ's presence moving within and among us. Bless the individuals and families that make up the community of faith that is First United Lutheran. Empower us to share your love and forgiveness with all the world. We pray for all in need. Draw near to those who have lost hope. Provide food for the hungry and shelter for those in need of safe housing. Comfort the grieving and heal the sick. We especially pray this evening for Mary and Shirley and Wayne. We also pray Pray for Vicki and Barb and Francine. We lift up before you Randy, Ron, and Chris. We also lift up in prayer Amira and Heather and Travis and Marlene and Debbie and Luella. We pray, God, for your presence to be with Betty and Darlene, Sophie, and Tom. And we pray for Chloe, Wendy, and Wally. We take a moment to lift up others before you who we name silently in our hearts.
grant healing and comfort to all in need. Receive our prayers and the prayers of all in need in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, we're going to continue our service with our song of celebration, There is Redeemer. And of course, you will see on the screen as well a way that uh, you can donate or give your offering to First United. We appreciate anything that people are willing to do during this time. Uh, we appreciate your gifts. Obviously, we still have expenses, so anything that you can do is um, uh, we're grateful for. And so with that being said, let us sing There is a Redeemer as we take a moment to pause to give thanks for the offerings of, of God, not only in our lives, but that we can share with others. We'll now continue with our prayer of dedication. Let us pray together. Lord God, 
All that we are and all that we have are gifts from you. Open our eyes to see your love. Open our ears to hear your words of grace. Open our hearts in gratitude to share what we have been given and open our hands to serve others. In your name, amen. Please join in the Lord's Prayer at this time. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Our sending song. Okay, Thursday night, you might have heard our dog, yes, we do have a dog, Sophie, barking throughout the service. We thought giving her a treat and maybe a brand new monkey squeak toy might occupy her while we're recording this, but obviously that did happen. But this is our uh, dog, Sophie, and so, uh, you know, every once in a while as we're recording worship, you may hear her bark or be a part of the service in some way. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. And may the Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.